Hello, welcome to my tech fun to another filament testing video. Sanun sent me easy ABS for the testing and I got two spools, but one of them is already open because uh, I use it in that uh, review video, the Kingron KLP1. Now they claim they adjusted the ratio of three basic materials, you know, A, B, S, and added some additive materials. And with this, they changed the printing temperature and it is now between 225 and 235 degrees Celsius. And also the bed temperature can be low at 70 degrees Celsius. Now they also claim that with this, uh, the warping and the cracking is reduced by 99%. And also the irritating odor is also reduced by 70%. I'm not sure how can I measure these numbers exactly, but it is true. In the Kingroom KRP1 review video, I couldn't feel that bad smell of the ABS very minimally. And also uh, the printing was very smooth without warping, but that is fully enclosed printer. Now, anyway, I will print my regular uh, test objects for the mechanical testing and we will see how it performs. Nice vacuum packaging with some desiccant inside and typical from the Sunlu. Only one small sticker, it writes it's easy ABS in grey color and the print temperature between 225 and 235 degrees Celsius but not even information about the brand on it or maybe weight of the empty spool and similar. I appreciate this reminder for the beginner users that uh, you always have to lock the end of the filament to avoid some kind of jam or tangle of the filament on the spool. Now that footage was recorded during the Kingroom KLP1 video, but everything I will print now on Prusa Mark 3S inside this CK Alec enclosure, because uh, most of my tests are printed or on Prusa Mark 3S, or if it is PLA, then on Ender 3S1. And I'm using the Prusa Satin Sheet for this, following the Prusa Material Guide for the print sheets. And uh, according to that, I don't have to use the glue stick, but the temperature should be around 100 degrees Celsius. Now the Sano claims that 70 degrees Celsius is enough, so I will see, maybe I will start with 80 degrees or something like that. And the temperature tower I will print without glue stick, but uh, later I will check the bed adhesion after the printing. If necessary for my test objects, I will use the glue stick on the print surface. And I like to use this uh, PVA based glue stick which arrives with some prusament filaments because uh, it is very easy to wash them with the water after the printing. The stand is finished and it's perfectly straight and inside the enclosure it is uh, already 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, usually if the heated bed would be 100 degrees Celsius uh, at the end of the printing it would be 50 inside. This is a critical bridging moment with the very low part cooling. But it looks okay here. The printing is finished. Immediately I want to check the bed adhesion, which is great. Only 80 degrees Celsius on the bed, so definitely I can trust this adhesion. And I will not use the glue stick, not even for my test objects. The bed is 40 degrees Celsius. Oh, perfect. Analyzing this temperature tower, it looks great on both elements, absolutely no stringing. Bridging is perfect. I think it uh, was 15% part cooling by default. Bottom of the overhang looks good. Only from the top I can see some curling up. But otherwise, great temperature tower. I decided to print all test objects at once and uh, they are completely straight so far. I think the last one for the layer attention test will be a little bit risky because of that curling up. But uh, until that problem appears, everything else will be CD printed. If necessary, I will reprint those two objects and uh, I will slow down the printing or add more part cooling or something like that. And because the bed is heated only to 80 degrees Celsius and there is a sensor, the temperature inside the enclosure stabilized around 42 degrees Celsius only. But no warping, that's good. And looks like the last two objects will be printed correctly. The bridging is also finished. I had to slow down the printing to 80% because I noticed some curling up, but uh, everything looks fine now. The bed already cooled down. <laughs> and they are completely removed. And perfectly straight objects, so very easy for printing definitely. And I hope the mechanical properties will be at least similar to the regular ABS. In this case, maybe I have my new uh, favorite ABS material. The tensile pulling test with the horizontally printed objects and the smallest cross-section area is 4 by 4 millimeters. And this is typical for the ABS that under the stress we can see these white surfaces. The layer adhesion test with the vertically printed objects.
the break is correct on the smallest cross-section area and again I can see that the white uh, cross-section surface. Two sided shear stress, the diameter of this test object is 5 mm. Shared correctly in three pieces, only I couldn't find the third part. And now three point bending test. This is between supports is 50 mm. And I'm using these loads which I replace one by one. And I want to measure the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. This is the deformation under 1.25 kg load, 2.5 kg, 5 kg and under 10 kg load. And after removing of the load uh, it got back its original shape and I cannot see any permanent deformation on these test objects. And on one side I can see again that uh, white surface under the stress. I the impact test and now we will see how tough or brittle is this uh, ABS. Usually the ABS is more tough material compared to the regular PLA or even PETG. Easy ABS. The zero position. Well for the first look very tough material, definitely like every other ABS, but I will analyze the footage later. The age is the difference between the zero position and the position of the hammer after breaking the test object and it can be used in this equation to calculate the breaking energy. The torque or twist test and this side goes into the vise and the other goes into the torque meter and I want to record the load at 90 degree angle and the maximum load. Up to. The peak. Interesting deformation. Of course, more important is the load at 90 degree angle, but uh, these uh, two rotations or even more is good because it will not break so suddenly. This is my temperature test in the oven, and I have several experiments in the progress. This is the PLA, a near PLA, easy ABS, and high tough resin also by Sanlu. And I'm recording the temperature of the first significant deformations. This is a timeless speed up video 25 times and uh, approximately at uh, 70 degrees Celsius I noticed the first deformation on this ABS. Well, this is a little bit disappointing results. It is very similar to average PETG material. Because of other materials in this test I went up to 180 degrees Celsius but it wasn't necessary if I would test only ABS. Well, because of the other test objects I went up to 180 degrees Celsius but I was following the temperatures and well a little bit lower temperature than the regular ABS but definitely much better than I know PLA or PTG. And now my regular creep test where I am measuring the deformation distance between two reference surfaces under the constant load and I have uh, three experiments in progress at least we have some comparison between them so this one is the easy ABS this is the PLA, this one is the anil PLA, and this is some resin material. The load will be 1.25 kilograms, as always. Certain ten. I measure the distance and tomorrow I will measure again to see what is the additional deformation. In the meantime, the weight from the resin fall down after 10 minutes. This is their deformation on the fifth day. I measure them every day and soon I will show you all the results. Let's analyze the data is in this Excel table which you can download from my techfun.com website. And I will try to include the data for the average ABS I collected from uh, that summary Excel table for my patrons. And let's start with the creep test and this is that measured dimension for the reference surfaces but what we need is a difference between two days and that's what we can see here on this table or on this graph and we can see that uh, this uh, easy ABS has a lot of creeping maybe on day four or day five it stabilizes and reach the creeping of the average ABS.
The Tensai test uh, here, the average ABS is a little bit stronger compared to the easy ABS. And interesting, the layer adhesion test, and this is the only test where the easy ABS was uh, better compared to the average ABS. And this is what I like. Maybe because of the lower melting temperature, the layers sticks better to together, I'm not sure. The shell stress, again, uh, average ABS is a little bit stronger, but not so important data. The bending test, and uh, here you can see some bigger difference, especially in the higher loads, but this is only the deformation after 30 seconds on this given load. But more important is this table, where we can see here the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds for given load. And uh, here we can see that not only uh, the average I don't have the ABS in this test, only the one ASA, but it is not only stronger, but especially uh, you can see on bigger loads, it almost doesn't creep the average ASA, but here we can see some creeping on bigger loads. The torque or twist test, well, very similar data here, no big difference. Now the IZ impact test. This is important actually for the ABS, but average ABS perform better compared to the easy ABS. But uh, the easy ABS uh, is still three times better than the average PETG. And the temperature test, which is a little bit disappointing, only 70 degrees Celsius, which is very similar to the average uh, PETG filament. And now conclusions, and I have some positive and negative opinion about this filament. And I will start with the positive. Definitely, yes, very easy for printing. I can print some smaller parts on open printer without any warping or problems. And I couldn't feel that uh, unpleasant smell of the ABS. It has great layer adhesion, probably because of the lower melting and printing temperature. This means that you can print it even on the Teflon light hot tents. You can print it on the highest recommended print temperature to get even better layer adhesion. Because don't forget the regular ABS, yes, you can print it on 230 to 40 degrees Celsius, but usually that's closer to the lowest recommended print temperature, and there you will get a weaker layer adhesion. I also like this uh, white surface, and uh, I use it as a warning that uh, sometimes my parts are overloaded and all I have to reprint the parts or I have to reduce the load or something similar. Now about the negative things. Well, uh, except the layer adhesion, all mechanical properties are weaker compared to the regular ABS, including the creeping or impact uh, resistance. The impact strength is still uh, three times stronger compared to the average PETG, but I think the weakest point of this filament is the temperature resistance. It is same like average PETG, but usually this is the most common uh, reason why I would like to go with ABS instead of the PETG. The second most common reason is if I want to smooth the surface with adjustment vapor, but that's a different story. Okay, so this was my experience with uh, easy ABS. Uh, if I miss something or maybe I should include in my testing methods, you know, write me some suggestions down in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing.